I think he also said personally he likes ghee. But he always said, eat what you can digest. The Prophet always said that you should eat what you can digest. The Prophet said to me, he said, if you eat what you like, it will be good for you. My parents came to see me at the manor. And um, Prabhupada was in London, and I'd come back from London to the manor to meet with, with my parents. I hadn't seen them for about five years, and they had never seen me as a devotee. So um, during the course of the afternoon, I went to look for some prasadam for them. And there was none. I was told, well, we have an early Sunday feast here, and there's nothing left. So I was unable to give them any. Anyway, I took them around the manor, and uh, I explained a bit of the philosophy, etc. They were unfortunate in that they didn't get to see Srila Prabhupada. Um, they were just about to leave, because they had a four-hour drive home, when Prabhupada came back from London, and he came in through the gate just as we were stood there, and they were, you know, saying goodbye. So they kind of got a glimpse, that was all. Um, anyway, so afterwards, they, after they'd gone, I went up to see Srila Prabhupada and he asked me, well, how did it go with your parents? So I said, it was very nice, they were very favorable, and you know, I showed them the deities and we looked around and you know, I explained a bit of the philosophy. So then Prabhupada said, did they get prasadam? So they said, oh, well, actually I was told there wasn't any. And Prabhupada said, oh. It was almost like, well, what was the use? You know, if they didn't get prasadam, then the whole trip was made basically a failure. <laughs> so, you know, he, he put a lot of uh, emphasis on, on prasadam. It was a very practical way, uh, you know, for a person to make advancement in Krishna consciousness. And uh, my mother was always, of course, nice to me, never favorable, you know, to the movement. I mean, she was polite and respectful and all that, but not, you know, always just thinking how, I, how to get me out of this thing. Typical mother. So, uh, so I said to go see Prabhupada. So she went up and sat down in front of Prabhupada, and I saw her transformed. Actually, she became like a little, like a young girl, sitting in front of Prabhupada. And of course, by her culture, she was very respectful and so on. And she became like a young girl. And Prabhupada began to tell her that how fortunate she was that her son was a devotee of Krishna, and she nodded in agreement. You know, her whole life since I joined was <laughs> the opposite, but in Prabhupada's presence she was overwhelmed and she politely nodded in agreement. And uh, then after she, after a few minutes she went downstairs. And for, uh, for the only time she ever did that, she actually opened her purse and said, can I give you something for your movement? You know, the, before it was the usual mantra, you know, are you sure it's just for you? Bullockart was there, so next day when he walked around the yard, then he saw the Bullockart. We had a banner on the Bullockart which said, in a semicircle like this, it said, Bhakti Vedanta Bullockart Travelling Sankirtan Party. It says Travelling Sankirtan. So Prabhupada stood there and he put his head like this and he was reading, Bhakti Vedanta Bullockart Travelling Sankirtan. <laughs> and then he said, Joy. So then he came to the bulls, fed them some grass, patted on their cheek like this. Then he said that these bulls are carrying Gaurnitai for preaching. Uh, they will go back home, back to God. They won't have another life. Prabhupada was in Caracas, and we were desperately trying to get the first Spanish Bhagavatam, which was being printed in America, out of the printers and down to Caracas in time to give Prabhupada while he was still there in our zone. And he was flying from Caracas to Miami. So there were a few glitches and the book was not coming in time. So we were disappointed. Then finally, somehow or other frantic negotiations with the printer and we arranged that uh, the book was rushed down by air freight to Caracas and it arrived the same morning Prabhupada was leaving. So we had some of our leaders there in Venezuela desperately, you know, trying to get it out of customs. And South America is not always the easiest place in the world to do things like that. Meanwhile, Prabhupada went to the airport and, uh, you know, he was checked in and so on. We did all that for him. And uh, to my great dismay, the book hadn't come and Prabhupada went through the 
immigration check, passport check, and that was it. So just after Prabhupada had gone in, we paid obeisances, and I was a little disappointed. Suddenly the book came. So uh, I became so inspired to give this first Spanish Bhagavatam to Prabhupada. I was there, of course, with a shaved head and dunda and so on. I just went running through the airport. You know, it's a South American country. There are, you, know, you can't just run through police checks and things like that in any country. And certainly not there either. But I was so inspired. Uh, Krishna, somehow Krishna just arranged everything. And I ran right past the passport check. No one said a word to me. Here I was shaved in the dunda. Ran right past uh, all, there were several checkpoints. You've got to show this and show that. Ran past all of them. No one said a word to me. I ran right into the waiting lounge, the international waiting lounge, and went down, offered obeisances, and sat next to Prabhupada. He actually, he had me sit next to him. No, one, no official said a word to me. And I gave him the Bhagavatam. So Prabhupada was very pleased. He looked at it. Then he wanted to check to see if it was bona fide. So he said, can you translate this? I, from Spanish back to English. I said, yes, Prabhupada. So he said, all right. So he opened to the preface and said, read this in English. So I read it in English. Prabhupada saw it was correct. It was bona fide. So he was very happy. Then he, then they called him for his flight just then, and he walked off holding the Bhagavatam and got on the plane, went to Miami. <laughs>